Hello everyone. I am Dr. Nirav Tosani. I am an assistant professor and the director of advanced endoscopy at the McGowan Medical School at the University of Texas, Houston. And I am Dr. Eric Wilson. I am professor and vice chair of surgery and the director of minimally invasive and elective surgery at the McGovern Medical School in Houston. We would like to thank the ASGE for the opportunity to share with you a video discussing endoscopic evaluation of hiatal hernia using Hill grade classification. Gastroesophageal reflux disease is a common gastrointestinal disease and it accounts for nearly 7 million outpatient clinic visits in the United States. Hiatal hernia is frequently present in patients with gastroesophageal reflux disease. Gastroenterologists routinely describe axial displacement of the stomach to define the presence of a hiatal hernia. Axial displacement or length of hiatal hernia is routinely measured as the distance between gastroesophageal junction to the diaphragmatic pinch. Although all gastroenterologists routinely perform examination of gastric fundus in a retroflexion view, assessment of diaphragmatic width and gastroesophageal flap wall is not routinely reported during upper endoscopy. The Hill grade classification is an endoscopic assessment of the gastroesophageal flap valve based upon a retroflex view. This classification was originally developed by Hill and colleagues based on in vitro and in vivo assessment and was published in Gastrointestinal Endoscopy in 1996. Hill grade classification is frequently used in preoperative assessment of GERD patients considering anti-reflux surgery and is a helpful guide to clinicians performing anti-reflux procedures by providing a standardized description of the hiatal hernia and gastroesophageal junction anatomy. It is important to fully insufflate the stomach to better assess the Hill grade classification in retroflexion. It is also vital to examine the gastroesophageal flap valve over several cycles of respiration. So let's review how to assess the gastroesophageal flap valve using the Hill grade classification. A grade 1 valve is defined by the presence of a prominent fold of tissue closely approximated to the shaft of endoscope and extending 3 to 4 cm along the relaxer curve at the entrance of esophagus into the stomach. As you can see in this video of a hill valve 1, we are looking under retroflexion and the valve stays tight around the scope during the entire examination. The valve does not appear to change much with inspiration and there is a significant folded flap present. With a hill grade 2 valve, the fold of tissue is less prominent and there are occasional periods of opening and rapid closing around the endoscope with the respiration. In a hill valve 2, we notice the valve gaps off of the scope intermittently and often with respiration but still grabs the scope for a significant period of time the folded flap flattens intermittently as well. In comparison to grade 1 and 2 valves, a grade 3 gastroesophageal valve has no prominent fold at the entrance of the esophagus into the stomach and the endoscope is not tightly gripped by the tissues. The valve stays open under full insufflation during the examination. For a Hill valve grade 3, we can see that once we are fully insufflated, the hiatus means a gap off of the scope and never grips the scope for any significant period of time. The mouth of the hiatus often widens with inspiration, but never fully closes. Finally, with a grade 4 valve, the patient has a large hiatal hernia and essentially no fold so that the lumen of the esophagus is gaping open, allowing the squamous epithelium to be viewed from below. In a Hill valve grade 4, the hiatus is completely open and the scope is never gripped by the valve. The valve is so enlarged that you can fully see the Z-line as well as the esophageal squamous mucosa. There is obvious stomach in the chest. Transoral endoluminal anti-reflux procedures can often be performed on patients with grade 1 or 2 valves, but they are not advised in patients with grade 3 or 4 valves where surgical approaches have been shown to provide better outcomes due to the need to directly close the hiatus when it becomes substantially larger. We thank you for your time and we hope that this video tutorial will positively impact the management of your patients with gastroesophageal reflux disease.